Dear Home Cook. <laughs> Congratulations, you have been selected. Oh my God, I'm gonna tear up. <laughs> Congratulations, you have been selected from thousands of applicants from across the country. To audition for the MasterChef Canada judges. And surprise, your audition starts now. <laughs> now. What? Uh, like, right now? Stop it. The judges want to see what you can do with, with one of the world's most popular ingredients. Rice. 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 It's a staple found around the globe in almost every home and every culture. The possibilities are endless. You'll cook your rice dish in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. But today, you have to decide what you will make. And you'll only have 20 minutes to gather all your ingredients. Wow, I'm at a school. I'm in a machine shop. What am I going to find ingredients? You can get them from your cupboard, your fridge, a neighbor, or your local grocery store. But don't waste a single second because your MasterChef Canada journey starts now. 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 Good luck. Whoa. Oh my God. Am I really supposed to decide right now? I see all the stations, the gallery, the M. It's bonkers. They're here to cook their rice dishes for the judges and earn a coveted white apron. Oh my God, look at the aprons are there. The aprons are at the front and I definitely want one of those. I need this because this could launch my dream of opening my own restaurant. I'm a cancer survivor. I know life is short, and now I know I really need to do this for myself. I really want to make it to the top 12 and win the title of MasterChef Canada. I am doing a Asian-inspired lobster risotto. My dish requires so many steps. I'm so behind already. I know I have to go faster than I usually do. Medic! Ooh, Mays cut her finger. It looks bad. This is the worst cut that I've ever had. Ah! I cut my finger really, really bad, but I really want to make it to the top 12. I'm gonna battle through and get the apron. Oh! Good job, brother. Oh! Nice job, everyone. We're excited to taste every one of your dishes. But before we do that, please cover your dish with the cloche at your station and leave the kitchen. If you see a cloche on your station, do not touch it. If your station has been cleared, please come up to the front. Being chosen to compete against the best of the best is something you should all be very proud of. Every year, home cooks raise the bar, making it that much more difficult to succeed. Your dishes were the very best. <laughs> Top 12! I did it! Yeah. I still have to cook my lamb and grill my fruit and my tomatoes. May is like laser focused right now, it's crazy. This dish needs to be perfect, because I know what I'm capable of, and when I can't produce that, I get really upset. Hi there, May. Hi, Chef Michael. So you got uh, given the salt shaker. Yes. I actually prefer to cook savory. I'm making a marinated lamb, and then I'm going to be doing some grilled uh, stone fruit on the side. So the lamb, you're going to be cooking to which color? I will be going for a medium rare. Pretty much, I'm just kissing it onto the pan, and then straight to the oven. I'll let you focus. Thank you. Thanks, May. Sounds awesome, May. I am so mad at myself right now. I wish I had started on my lamb a lot earlier. My fruit could have waited. Oh, and... Look, May has just taken her lamb out of the oven. She hasn't let it relax, and now it is being cut. Oh. My. It's completely raw. <sighs> I'm so desperate to get this lamb cooked and start searing it on the pan. I don't think May's gonna make it. May is not gonna make it, cardio. Didn't I just say that? May, would you please bring your dish to the front? This plate does not represent fully what I can do in the kitchen. I feel so disappointed in myself. I did a lamb marinated in garlic, thyme, and dill, a plum gastrique, and a celery root puree. The overall plate presentation, I think, looks terrific. Let's see how that lamb looks, the moment of truth. In my gut, I know this lamb is not cooked enough. 
I feel like I want to turn around and run out of this kitchen. <laughs> Is that what you'd expect of me? Um, I would like it to be a little less pink. I would have to agree with you. Let's have a taste. Taste-wise, it's great. Well seasoned. And the bright flavors on the gastrique emphasizes the plum. This has come down to time management on your behalf. I think so too. It was a mistake, but was it a tragic flaw? I really don't know. I'm in trouble. I'm just not ready to go home. Alice and May. You both came here brimming with talent and potential. While we still see that in both of you, your stone fruit dishes didn't live up to that promise. The home cook, whose dish just showed enough skill to keep them in this competition, is... May. Looks like May is the first one to get the ink sack out. Impressive. I got this. This is all about impeccable time management. If you put your noodles into that water too early, they're gonna get mushy. If they don't go in and have enough time, they're gonna be too al dente. One minute, you have one minute left. Check your plate, make sure you have everything on it. Hi there, May. Hi, Chef Michael. How are you feeling? I think I might have overcooked my egg. What makes you think your egg is overcooked, May? I cooked it for the same amount of time that Matt did. I also did it for six minutes as well. I see. Yeah. You know, if the egg is cold, it takes a little longer. Depending whether it's room temperature, it may take a little bit less time. The size of the egg. So let's see if this egg is golden, rich, and runny. If my egg is overcooked, this could be the end of my food dream. Look at that. Looks pretty good to me. Relieved? Relieved. <laughs> Did you hit the egg with a little salt? No, I hit the noodles with the salt. It's always that last bright pop a flavor. Never forget again. <laughs> You'll never forget again is yeah. right. So what am I expecting to taste when I dig into this jet black noodle? You're gonna get the garlic, the butter, and the olive oil, as well as the chives. This tastes great. Flavors are there. I can taste the garlic. I can taste the lemon. Be proud. Thank you, Chef Alvin. It feels like there is way more at stake in this kitchen. Are you ready to make a flawless eggs Benny? Yes, yes chef. chef! Your time starts now! I need to win here, and I'm not going into that final. I want this so bad, and no one's going to take this from me. A 10-minute timer on this challenge is so difficult. Every second counts. Look at this. May right now is the front runner. She is already applying hollandaise to the top of the poached egg. And that hollandaise, we wanted a beautiful yellow color. It is unbelievable. Wow, you pulled it off. But there's nothing more disappointing, May, than cutting into a poached egg and not having that beautiful golden yolk ooze out. Wow. That is, that just leaves me speechless. Let's see if it tastes as good as it looks. You obviously added vinegar to the water. Did you add any salt to the water? I did. I did. It's a bit bland. And there's another issue. 
you can see that the hollandaise is just slightly too thin. It's just washing off of that egg, and that's critical. And I think that bacon makes up for the lack of salt on the egg. That's a pretty solid performance by you. Thank you. I didn't get a perfect critique. I'm still feeling really unsure. A perfect eggs Benedict in 10 minutes is a tall order for any home cook. You should all be commended just for finishing. And some of you finished with a bang. Trevor and May, congratulations. I feel so relieved. All right, let's rock and roll. Red team, order in. Two artichoke salad, two consomme. Her chef. For the appetizer service, Barry and Trevor are building the artichoke salad. OK, so we'll go artichoke, chip, green. Let's build them. And I'm on duck consomme watch. The judges take a moment to taste each team's dish. Let's try the red team's consomme. Wow. That pastry, it's nice and flaky. It's perfectly cooked. That is beautiful, isn't it? But broth right. needs a bit of salt. I agree with Claudio that it could be just seasoned a touch more, just to hit that peak. Okay. Doing the fish. I am responsible for the monkfish dish, and it'll be plated by Barry. I'm having the monkfish from the Red Kitchen. The taste is very good. So, Michael, that was intense. It's always a roller coaster ride, but you love every moment of it. OK, we've got two monkfish dishes here. Let's try the red team's fish. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That is delicious. Cooked on the fish is perfect. And notice the fry on the prosciutto, that nice color, nicely done. Flavors are still very good on the blue team, just not as nicely cooked as the red team. It's safe to say, on this particular main course, the red team's got it. Absolutely. I have a 25% chance of turning my life around, and I'm going to give it my all. Gloves are off. Turn around and say hello to oh! your families. Oh! oh, my God! I'm just so happy to see familiar faces. My boyfriend's looking really thin, because there is no one at home to cook for him right now. Me. I have my two biggest supporters here with me. I have my sister, Nikki. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. In 2011, I was diagnosed with stage 3 lymphoma. Nikki always took care of me. She kind of was like another mom to me. And my boyfriend, Dimitri, here. I've been with Dimitri for four years now, and, and he's a pretty good guy. Me and Taya. Yesterday, you worked beautifully as a team. But today, you're going head to head in the highest stakes pressure test yet. Please put on these black aprons. Going into head-to-head -to -head with May is definitely the hardest part. She is my best friend in this competition, and it'll be bittersweet for either one of us. Tonight, your challenge is to replicate this show-stopping dessert. Just cotton candy? What? It's a little mystery on a plate. Now, the key to revealing all its irresistible elements is this beautiful passion fruit reduction. Pour it on, and the cotton candy cloud dissolves to reveal a deliciously tropical landscape. This is what I'm curious about. Oh, the pineapple's just, it's just laying, laying on top, so like. Oh, wait, is there something underneath it, too? Oh, there's too many things going on in this dessert. Like, I need a pen and paper to write all these things down in order to recreate it. As much as I love and respect Taya, I would love to knock her out of this competition. We're friends outside of this kitchen, but today we're competitors. May the best home cook wins. I'm a fighter, and I fought my way throughout the last couple years of my life. I had to survive cancer. All my experiences made me exactly who I am today, and I deserve to be here. I want this. I want this. I want this. I met my family yesterday. They gave me a renewed sense of confidence. I came here to win, and I'm going to
Oh, you too. You chef. Aren't, you, aren't you glad you're up here? Aren't you glad? <laughs> what a view. Tell me, who do you think has the upper edge? I think May is a natural baker. She memorizes the ingredients because baking is a science. You can't vary, and May is very good at that. If they want to stand a chance to survive this pressure test, it's really important that they make that perfect, light, fluffy, yet moist sponge cake. Notice that May filled her sponge cake over the top, which means now that that sponge will stick to the top, and then you're done. Muffin tops. Yeah, muffin tops. I realized that I overfilled my cake mold. It's a problem because it needs to sit nice and flushed on the plate. This is a replication challenge, and all of these details make a huge difference. You're only as strong as the weakest component. This could send me home. It's too late for me to do anything about it. I just need to focus on the other components of this dish. I am a fighter. I will never give up. There's a cookie. There's a mascarpone, quenelle. There's flambé pineapple. This dessert is so much for one person to do in 60 minutes. The dough is rather like a thick batter on a twill, and you have to spread it in a thin, even layer. Now, that's a smart move by May. She made a couple in case the first does not work out. Always have an insurance policy when you're baking. I'm not letting this cake defeat me. I'm cutting off the top, but I'm losing all the pineapple pieces. So I'm just going to take my flambéed pineapple and just shove them in. I can do this. She's going to make it work. I like that spirit. It's really fun to be taking these kiwis out and smashing them. It lets a lot of stress out. <laughs>How do you think you made out here? I think I did pretty well. Overall, the presentation looks pretty incredible here. It looks more cloudy, more generous than Taya's plate. I'm curious to see what's happening inside. Wow. May, are you happy with the way your sponge turned out? Uh, I overfilled my sponge cake, and um, I had to cut off that layer and embed more flambéed pineapple in there. You took an obstacle, and you went around it, and you fixed it. You're really thinking like a winner right now. I hate it when this happens. I think that was from the butter. A little bit of aluminum. Wow. It pains me to see that. Listen, the sponge is actually, it's delicious. It's amazing. You know, May, overall, it's an incredible accomplishment, what you pulled off here. May. Chef Alvin. How do you think you did? Here. I think the I trip. actually did really good. Like, it's nice and thin, nice color to it. This was supposed to be a macadamia flavor trio. Yes. OK? So when I bite into it, it's supposed to be crunchy. Yes. Well, that you done perfectly. I'm getting exactly that crunchiness, that nuttiness. Overall, you did a fantastic job. You made a little tiny mistake. Okay, but do not count yourself out. Never count yourself out. Thank you, Chef Alvin. I don't want this to be the last time I cook in the MasterChef kitchen because this was such an amazing cook for me, and I'm just going to keep getting better. Unfortunately, only one of you can join Barry and Trevor in the top three. As you both know, this was a replication challenge. So we had to get very specific in assessing each element on your plate. In the end, one home cook just inched ahead when it came to flavor and execution. And that home cook is... <sighs> Taya.
Renee, you lit up this kitchen right from day one with your talent, your passion, and your drive. Your dream is to own your own restaurant, and you've shown us that you have the requisite skills and the confidence to make that happen. Now come on up here and say goodbye. Two home cooks have been awarded the coveted white apron. But after a series of grueling challenges... A lot of pressure here. You have one minute, you can make it! Only six... Eric. ...rose to the very top. David. Mary. Trevor. Becky. Jennifer. While the rest... Hi, everybody. <laughs> ...had to give those aprons up. Thank you. Now, for the first time ever... The judges have invited 12 former competitors back. I left my job and started my own dumpling business. I have the skills now to be the next MasterChef Canada. Welcome back, old friend. <laughs> it's like going back to a place that scares you but also excites you at the same time. It's a good feeling. Dirty method here. <laughs> the dish that really still haunts me is that salmon dish. I just needed to really tighten up those flavors and execute it better. Last time I was here, I didn't have a clear identity in food. So this time, I really like to showcase Vietnamese flavors. Today, I'm making a green curry with poached salmon. I'm going to do it justice. I made a poached salmon with a Thai green curry sauce, crispy salmon skin. Well, the presentation, I'm going to submit. Beautiful flakes nicely and it's still juicy. It's a very good dish, well composed, nice cook on the salmon. You did well. Thank you, Chef Elvin. Everyone thinks because I'm from the East Coast that I'm constantly filleting fish. That's not the case. Beautiful snapper. So it's an incredible honor to see him do his craft right in front of us. The real secret lies in filleting that beautiful fish, ensuring that there is no flesh left on the bone. Oh, wow. wow. Then ever so delicately removing the skin and with expert precision slicing the sashimi. Each slice, wafer, wispy, thin, to the point where it's translucent. Finally, that exquisite plate presentation. Amazing. Wow. 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 I think he's done that before. <laughs> <laughs> Creating a dish like that can take years of experience. We're giving you just 15 minutes. Wow. <laughs> That's impossible. 15 minutes means nothing in the kitchen, nothing. Especially when you're under pressure, it goes by in a blink of an eye. I can't even do my hair in 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm moving extremely fast. I really want to get up to the balcony, but I'm having trouble removing the rest of the fillet from the collar. So I start hacking at the bone. Not the fish fillet, the bone. <laughs> I'm so nervous about time that plating skills go out the window for me. My fingers are shaking. 30 seconds left, come on. I want to see perfect replication. Look how thin that is. Very, very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. Jeremy, who do you fear? My biggest competition is May. I know May is the closest in food style to me, so I see her as a threat. So we are going to do a jerk chicken wing. Chicken wings, it's a comfort food. They're delicious, and they also travel well. Second dish, do we want something yeah. that's carb heavy? Something unexpected, though. Nothing easy like rice. Yes, no. yeah. No, let's do a soba noodle salad. There's your protein in there, or? Uh, yeah, let's do pork tenderloin. Yeah. Like, that's pork nice sauce. Here. I can see yeah. that up real yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I think this cold soba noodle salad is a good option because it's all pre-done. All you need to do is put a little bit of pork on top and dress it. And then our third one, it has to be, let's do a veggie, right? I think big fat portobello mushrooms in like a taco. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the okay. mushroom taco. taco. When I hear we're doing tacos, it just seems a bit strange to me. It's also food delivery. And when you have to assemble three tacos, that's a lot to execute. So taco, noodle, chicken wings. But it's what we're going to do. Okay, I'm really excited to pop this out. This is gonna be delicious. You guys, how are you doing?
Amazing. Thank Fantastic. You. Chef? Being a team leader, it's your job to make sure that everyone knows what they're doing and everyone is able to accomplish the tasks that you're giving them. Andrew's going to be working on the pork with the sauce and the portobello mushrooms, and then I have Barry working all the veg. Give me a cutting board and a knife. I'm good. And Andre's working on the chicken wings. Right now I have the gochujang, I have my jerk spice, and lots of garlic. You guys got the cabbage, red onion, carrots, cucumber. Yes. yes. May's leadership style is great. She's very forward, so I'm really happy to have her as a team captain. Barry, use the mandolin on those. I want it really thin. I'm not trusted. The mandolin we've got is you want it thinner than this? I do want it thinner than that. Okay. I think the most important aspect of working in a team environment is to function as a unit. Did anybody see brown sugar in the pantry? Uh, there's brown sugar right here for you. Thank you. So since Master Chef, I have left my professional job and started cooking full time as a line cook. After doing that for two years, I started my own little dumpling business. I'm really here just because I want to show how far I've grown. Hey, May, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing well. So tell me, what is your concept? So our menu is uh, tropical Asian. So we're going to be doing uh, like a gochujang a jerk chicken wing with cabbage slaw. And then we're going to do a soba noodle salad with pork tenderloin that is glazed with pineapple poison. Then with our vegetarian four dish, we're going to do a mushroom taco marinated in a soy based sauce, maybe a little bit of honey in there. Sounds delicious. Sounds like three very creative and innovative dishes that sound like they fit the concept really well. Thank you, Chef. Good luck. The heat's on. Thank you. Everybody ready? Yeah, Everybody's ready. ready. Okay. Let's all just support each other, you guys. We'll figure it out. We got all our stations set up. We are prepared. We're ready to dish out these bowls. We're ready. Yeah, all we're right. ready. Come on, orders! The MCC app goes live in five, four, three, two, one. It's live! We're going, guys. We're live. All right, guys, I'm going to be calling out orders, OK? Come on, baby. Give me an order. It's going to come hard. Yes. All right, new order. One chicken wings, two noodle salad. Got it. Yes, right. The most important aspect of running a really efficient service is you got to be on it. You got to move like lightning. All right, new order. One chicken wings, one mushroom taco. Yes, Andrew. I have Andrew expediting because he has tons of experience. He does this almost every day. He can keep all these orders organized. Guys, we need a uh, real quick turnaround on these orders, OK? As yeah. soon as they start piling in, we are going to be in trouble. order, two chicken wings, one noodle salad, one mushroom taco. Yes, Andrew, here's right. one chicken wing. Yes, Andrew. Andrew. Thank you. Andrew is amazing at expediting. He's keeping us so organized. I appreciate that May trusts me enough to let me expedite, but it would be nice as the team captain for her to check in. Noodle salad, how long? Uh, just give me a minute, one minute. Looks like Andrew is the new leader. Order up. I feel like May should be doing the soba noodles and overseeing everybody. Even though I'm expediting, doesn't mean I'm the leader. New order, two chicken wings, one taco, two drinks. Got it. Heard, Andrew. Good job. We did awesome. I'm feeling so good. I think I did underestimate Barry. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really proud of my team. Like, we banded together. I'm proud of us. You know, the Lodogitas in the butter and herb sauce, they are a much more delicate noodle than the Kumpunti. They require that delicate little twist to it, and consistency in size is super important. Oh, man, May is fast. That's how you can tell she's a dough master. I'm going to beat Andre because you know what? I work with dough for a living. I know the feel of dough, so I think that's why I have the fancy chair. I own a dumpling business. I work with dough all the time, so there's just so much pressure to win. I am laser focused, and I'm just going to do it. May looks confident, and, and, Andre, and Andre doesn't, doesn't look confident. Two minutes! Only two more minutes left! Come on! Let's, let's go, go, guys! Let's, let's go! go. Let's let's go. go. Andre, only a few more seconds! Nice. Finish it off! Finish it off! Oh, this is stressful. Andre and May, please bring your dishes up. Andre and May, you both made loriguitas with an herb butter sauce. The noodles here may look beautiful. They're very generous. They're very plump. And your sauce looks like you really emulsified it. It's a lot more generous. This pasta is cooked perfectly. However, your flavors are a little bit muted. They're not as electric as what we've come to expect from you. Flavor-wise, I would pick you, Andre. Technique, May, I would go with you. The winner of the second showdown is... May. May, head up to the gallery. Thank you, Chef. 
It's taking me forever to grate these carrots. I am making a carrot cake spice dumpling with vegan creme en glace. This is what I do for a living, so this is the time that I can showcase my skills. I obviously make dumplings all the time for restaurants, retail. I've also been starting to teach a lot of classes as well, and I'm always pushing the boundaries. That's what I'm really good at. So I haven't made a dumpling dish yet, and I just really want to pump one out. Hey, May. Hi, Chef Alvin. Tell me what you're doing. I'm actually going desserts and dumplings. I love dumplings. So do I. And you are the dumpling queen. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> OK, so I can tell you, a dumpling is my comfort food. My grandmother used to make dumplings all the time, so I remember as a little kid, I would wait for those. So all I can right. tell you, I'm really looking forward to your dumplings. And remember, presentation. Absolutely. Thank you, Chef. Today, I really want to stand out because you always have to cook your best dish, or it may be the last dish that you're going to be cooking in this kitchen. I'm blending ackee with almond milk to create an emulsified creme en glace sauce. I'm using the ackee as a kind of an egg replacement to build smooth, emulsified texture. Then I'm adding ginger, cinnamon, cloves, allspice. I want to make sure all those beautiful spices come through into the final bite. But it's really stressing me out because it also has to be beautiful and elegant. Creating a plant-based dish is already hard enough. I made a carrot cake dumpling, shredded carrots, all the typical carrot spice. The sauce is made with almond milk and ackee. May. It looks very beige, a bit flat. The color is hiding on the inside. <laughs> color is on the inside. There's the color. The flavors are delicious. Beautiful carrot mixture. Really great control of the spices. I do think, though, you could have gone further. Maybe I should have juiced some carrots and used that in the dumpling dough instead. Exactly. Start following your gut. Thank you very much, Chef. Hey, I'm so intrigued and fascinated that you decided to do a carrot cake dumpling. A very clever use of the ackee. The filling and flavors of the dumplings, I think, are spot on. It really had that cake feel to it, slightly sweet, carrot, cinnamony, and the dumpling wrappers are so light and tender. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. and galangal bunbeo. And bunbeo is a steamed Vietnamese rice cake. Galangal is often compared to ginger, but it doesn't have that much flavor. I'm using galangal in my seafood stock, my fish and shrimp marinade, and in my bunbeo. When I cook Vietnamese food, I'm thinking about my mom, because she's the one that cooked us all of our Vietnamese home dishes growing up. I'm not going home tonight. The velouté is the most important component of my dish because the flavor definitely has to show through. A velouté is fish stock that is thickened with a blonde roux, which is just flour and butter cooked down. And I'm just worried about getting the proper consistency right. If I mess up the sauce, that may send me home. Ooh, I taste that galango. I chose galango and velouté. I made a seafood and galango bunbeo. So I gotta waste no time and pick up on all these flavors, hopefully. You know how to cook shrimp. <laughs> it's been cooked with a great deal of care, passion, and intelligence, smarts. Boy, oh boy. The umami level in your velouté is amazing. And the shrimp are so beautiful and sweet. And the galangal, it just sings. It's a great dish. Well done. That velouté is incredible. I love it. The fish sauce, the way it shines through, the gal and gal, it's just there in the background. Great flavor, beautiful looking dish. I'm not sure I would change much about it, to be honest with you. Really, really sensational. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chef. I'm feeling so happy. The judges liked what I did. I was able to pull off that dish, and my mom's going to be super proud of me. We've discussed your dishes, and one thing is crystal clear. This competition is a heavyweight battle like nothing we've ever seen in this kitchen. Please come to the front, Christopher and May. 
We were so impressed by the way that you have tapped into your roots this season. And tonight, that resulted in your best dish ever. Thank you very much. The depth of flavor that you managed to achieve in just an hour is nothing short of amazing. So, how do we pick between them? How, how, how? I tell you, we do not. We're calling it a dead heat for the best of the night. You both deserve to join Andrew in the gallery. Good job. Good job. It's me. It feels pretty awesome, honestly. This win means that I belong here and I am a contender for that title. No, I'll do Lincoln Berry. I actually like Mystery Box Challenges, the fact that they limit the ingredients that I can use. Sometimes I get too crazy when you give me all the ingredients. I'm not doing Asian today. Um, I'm gonna go more of like a Nordic route, so I'm gonna do beets and squab. This dish is inspired by a chef that I worked with before, Christine Sanford because she runs a very sustainable kitchen. The stems of herbs, potato peels, she doesn't throw away. She tries to repurpose everything in her kitchen and she instilled all those values and principles in me. Because I won last week on a Vietnamese dish, I'm not gonna do that direction. I wanna show that I'm versatile. I just wanna keep a good tempo throughout this entire competition. You're not gonna make it to the top by playing it super safe. Hi there, mate. Hi, Chef. So we gave you a curveball. Which of the IKEA products did you use? I used the lingonberry spread, and then I think I might put some of that mustard in my uh, jus as well. Yeah, lingonberry jam, because I already have the lingonberry syrup at my station. I'll just remove lingonberry syrup and replace it with lingonberry jam. How are you actually going to be cooking this squab? I'm just going to pan sear them. Hopefully, it'll be a good cook. That's serious butchery skills there on oh. that squab. <laughs> Not the easiest thing to debone, that's for sure. It's quite little, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Good luck. Thank you. I have squab and beets. I use the beet greens, cactus fruit, mustard, lingonberry jam, and some watercress for garnish. The plating, I like. The color shining through from the beetroot is very pleasing to the eye. Now, the cook on the squab. So it's going for a rare. It is definitely rare. The only thing I didn't want to see when I cut into this is that cap. Yeah. You didn't render it long enough. No. It's a good combination. When you cook it rare, it gets very gamey. And the caramelization from the sauce and the lingonberry balance the flavor. The dish is good, but is it good enough? Oh, no. Tonight, we're asking you to create a perfect replication of... Wow. Oh. <laughs> this luxurious seafood platter. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I want to pair Chris and May. In the first team challenge, I got to see a little bit of May's leadership style, and she is strongly opinionated. And I know that Chris is very meticulous, so I just want to see if those clash a little bit. May, how do you feel about that assessment? I don't feel like I'm strongly opinionated. I was very willing to listen to my team members and I was very respectful to everyone, so. You would never refer to a man in a leadership role as opinionated. You would use words like he's confident, he's assertive. Like, of course I'm gonna be opinionated as a leader because I need to hold the opinions in order to delegate to you what to do. Christopher, how do you feel about being teamed with May? I'm pretty happy with the choice, actually. She's been doing a really, really fantastic job with all of the challenges up to now. I have no problem working with Chris. I'm actually excited to be working with Chris. You got this. Let's, let's do this. Andrew thinks that me and May are going to butt heads. But May is very fast in the kitchen, and she's also very precise. And I think we're going to bang this out. Chris, get the fish broken down. OK. Remember to save that tail. Christopher and I are going to operate as one person. Chris, get some veg. We can do the fish later. Get the veg in the pot, please. Got it. Whoever is in the kitchen doesn't have time to think. So the other person outside is going to do the thinking for them. Oh, man. Come on. Sorry. Move. move. Chris, you just got to go a little bit faster, man. You got to go a little bit faster. I've never heard May be quite so vocal Andrew, in any of our challenges. She is really fired up right now. Uh, thinly slice the leeks, please. Yeah, keep calling out to me. OK. May is not afraid to tell you what to do, but that's perfect. That's what we need in a team challenge. Chris, just microplane the garlic. Chris, just microplane garlic. Who the hell cares? Finish the marinade, then get the fish in there. I'm actually not going to worry about that right now. 
I think the way me and May organize things is a little bit different. I'm just gonna break down all the seafood for us. I'm just trying to cut things out of the way. May wants to start the ceviche later, which is not wrong, but I'm the kind of guy who likes to get one item done at a time. If we don't finish tasks as we start them, it's very easy to miss ingredients. We got this, we got this, we got this. Yes, 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 good. It looks like the tide is changing here. Christopher and May are ahead of everyone right now. Don't worry about the time, don't look at the time. Just focus on getting it done. Hands, Hands up. up! Yes! Woo! Holy! Woo. Wow. Good job. Chris, we did a pretty bang on job. We have every single component on there. Good job, Team Asian. For Team Asian. <laughs> Team Asian. <laughs> well, look at this, look at this. When Andrew was making up the team, I think his strategy was putting things that didn't mix together. Andrew, you got this <laughs> one wrong. Do you think it was a perfect mix, you guys? I think so. I think we worked really yeah. well together. We were just focused on getting every element out on the plate. But, does it taste good? Let's go for the fritter misto. Looking at it, it does look a little pale. The aioli, nice, very nice. The smell, it could have used just a little bit more time. I'm really looking forward to this squid here, because if we look at it, this is precise, like the, your parking cars. <laughs> you scored it nicely. It's really good. I think it's restaurant quality. Thank you, Thank you Chef, Chef Thank you. The ceviche looks amazing. Look at the liquid, beautiful. It's a smile on your face, <laughs> it's amazing. You're happy, aren't you? I'm very happy. So how does it taste? Oh man. Just a, a bone. Oh no. Who butchered the fish? It was me, chef. Christopher, if this was a restaurant ceviche and I received that, I'd return it. Absolutely, chef. I would comp the meal. Okay, mussels. Just by looking at these mussels, you can see that they're perfectly steamed. They're still plump. The broth is full of depth. Really incredible. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. I'm gonna try the sardines. Fabulous. Really well seasoned. Thank you, Chef. Next, the Coquille Saint-Jacques. It looks great. <laughs> Thank it you. really does. Sea scallop, lovely cook on it, nicely seasoned. The potatoes are very light and fluffy. It's amazing what two individuals can do when communicating clearly and concisely. Thank you very Thank much, you. Chef. I'm worried because our platter's not perfect. Hey. Good job, guys. Our ceviche, we forgot to check it for bones. No one's platter was perfect, but one was pretty darn close. May and Christopher! Yay, Your platter was the best of the bunch. Chris and I killed it. We worked so well as a team. We supported each other, and we communicated well together. OK, guys, I... Tips on a dumpling, please. I, I would want... I wanted to do a ravioli dopey, a double stuffed pasta on each side. Before we get into the individual stuff, yeah. what's, like, the, our theme? Is it, like, international? How about we go Italian, but then fusion Italian? Fusion be Italian? Easy, that's I would love fun. to do a seafood dumpling as the second course. Do you feel like two stuffed pastas, though, is going to be too much? Can you do a hand-rolled pasta instead? I really am standing firm on Same. what I want. I really so want to do You guys have to vote. Right at the gates, both Tay and May want to do a stuffed pasta, and they're digging their heels in. Mine's like an appetizer course, that's and I'm doing seafood. Do. Can you make it into the main? But that would be two stuffed pastas. I don't think that's a good idea. I really want to do a seafood dumpling. I have the whole thing so planned you guys already. Because it's three. The idea that Taya and May both want to do stuffed pastas and aren't willing to compromise is bothersome for me. I think it'll definitely hurt us as a team. We have to obviously make sure that we work as a team, but at the end of the day, one of us is going to be top and one of us is going to be bottom. But can I explain my dish to you? Yes. So I'm doing a seafood and shrimp, and then it's going to be a miso broth, like a okay. thick okay, but broth. but we didn't decide if we're doing yours or mine, and that's the thing. Taya, I'm not backing down, no. We're going to have to figure something yeah, out. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors. I think we can do two starches. Hers is meat, mine's seafood. They're sure, completely yeah, different. Perfect. Let's just do it. Just do them both. Do them both. Yeah. Okay. That's great. 
I'm just kind of being really rough with these spot prawns. I don't care that they're ripped because they're gonna be chopped up into my filling anyways. And I wanna take the shells and roast them off to develop more flavor before I throw them into my stock. One more spot prawn. Hi there, mate. Hi, Chef Michael. What are you working on? I'm gonna be doing a stuffed seafood dumpling. Now I'm currently making a seafood stock. That's gonna be the base for my broth. Interesting. So it sounds like you and Taya are doing stuffed pastas. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> was there any concerns between you and Taya or the rest of the cooks about was, having two pasta dishes? There was concern at first, but mine's seafood and hers is meat-based, so I feel like there's difference enough in that. Sounds like there are some differences, but it could be a case of the two dueling pasta makers right here. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> I look forward to seeing how it all turns out on a plate. Thank you very much, Chef. <laughs> Thank you. Not that great on time right now. I really want to change people's perception of what a dumpling can be. You can make these really elegant and really beautiful. Would you all please join us at the front? It's clear to us you put your heart and soul into tonight's meal. Your guests will no doubt appreciate your efforts. But I suppose you could just ask them yourselves because they're here. No, not back there. Right here. Oh. oh. <laughs> the eight culinary VIPs are the three of us and the five of you. Ooh. Very cool. Wow. cool. You'll be judging and being judged all at the same time. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to express myself with savory dumplings yet, and I really hope that they see that this dish is unique. I always like to put my own spin on things. I'm very sorry for the messy plates. Thank you. Looks amazing, really. May. Please describe your dish. Um, so I made a lobster and spot prawn capoletti. I also made a seafood stock out of the lobster shells and the shrimp shells. And then I made a chili oil with prawn heads. And then I just finished it off with a touch of miso and a touch of yuzu in there for some flavor complexities. It smells really good. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Andrew, does it taste as good as it looks? I think it's wonderful. It does look great. I like the broth. I like the play on Italian, but using some of these Asian components. I would say maybe just use either shrimp or lobster, not both. I do agree with Andrew. I think either spot prawns or lobster, maybe just lobster in this case, would have been better, especially with the spot prawns cooked texture. It can become a little bit mushy sometimes because of its delicate nature. Beautiful presentation as always, May. I like all the flavors. The yuzu is really surprising. The broth is delicious. Texturally, I would have liked a little bit more like chunks of lobster in there. I like that bite. I actually agree for the most part, uh, most of the critiques about my dish. It's a very strong dish, mate. You got some very strong components in there. Broth is beautiful. You should not have used the two to do filling. Spot on, I would never try to overcook it because it gets very mushy. Other than that, not enough caviar, but <laughs> that's me, Rich Alvin. I enjoyed the dish immensely. The flavors, the taste, the texture. I do share Alvin's comments. I'd like a little more caviar on it. <laughs> I think, May, you keep surprising us with your level of skill. The pasta is perfectly rolled. With regards to the spot prawns, I would have just laid those on top of the pasta and then draped a little bit of the hot chili oil on top of them and lightly cooked them, just kind of kissed them with the oil, and you'd have a masterpiece. Thank you, Chef. Top five, we have the results of your voting, and they are very interesting. Four of you earned first place votes from at least one of your competitors, and four different cooks were ranked last on at least one ballot. So there was definitely not a consensus. The results might reflect a range of factors, taste, presentation, technique, and strategy. We gave you the power, and you decided how to use it. The cook that you chose as the best of the night is... May. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> It means so much to be voted as the best dish of the night because this is coming from my fellow competitors. It means they ate and liked my dish. I was not expecting that. Congratulations, May. You'll be getting a big advantage in next week's challenge. Thank you very much. <laughs> Get first dibs at shoots. Back in season four, I definitely would not have been ready to cook a finale dessert. I don't even think 
think I know that girl from season four anymore. And I'm just so happy that I'm able to show who I am now and just my growth. Melted butter, half a cup. Dessert is not my strong suit, but it doesn't mean I can't cook a dessert, you know? I still have to make desserts in my house because my partner has the biggest sweet tooth in the world. So I make like one pastry or baked good for him a week. Two eggs. Hello, May. Hi, Mary. Thank you for choosing my dessert. That was the one I was eyeing up. What is your spin? What are you doing to make it different? I'm just gonna play up with different textures. So I'm actually gonna be making a cornmeal cake because I noticed that you had corn on there. I will be making a blueberry mousse, brown butter, almond crumble. Delicious. The almonds from the... Financier, yeah, you're yeah. crushing yeah. it already. <laughs> yeah. And then lemongrass buttermilk gel. Choosing lemongrass, that's part of your roots, right? Yeah. Use a ton of lemongrass. This sounds amazing. Adding the lemongrass in there is such a smart idea because lemongrass has such a zesty flavor, but it gives you that lemon punch, which is perfect. And cornmeal is such a great ingredient for dessert because it gives you that kind of toothy feel yeah. without it being like corn. Hopefully it turns out. <laughs> I'm going to leave you to it, okay? All right, thanks, Mary. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks Thank so you. much, Mary. I haven't finished my blueberry mousse yet. I still have to fold in the cream. I really want to get the mousse into the fridge because it takes time to set. And I don't have time to start over on any single component on my dish. If I don't have enough time to set my blueberry mousse, it's basically just gonna be a blueberry soup. My lemongrass gel did not work out and there's still so many components that I need to work on. I have this idea that I want to do a blueberry mousse quenelle on top of the brown butter crumble and have it next to the cornmeal cake. I'm trying to make my quenelle and it's just very finicky because the blueberry mousse didn't have time to set. I have to reconfigure my plating, so I decide to pipe it instead. Me, please bring up your dessert and your palate cleanser. I'm really hoping that the judges can see the flavors and the ideas that I put on the plate. So I chose Mary's dessert for inspiration, and I made a cornbread cake with blueberry mousse, corn custard, brown butter crumble, and an almond twill. And for my palate cleanser, I made a lemon and blueberry granita. So let's start with the palate cleanser. It's very fresh, very poppy. It's a great beginning to a dessert. <laughs> How do you feel about the presentation of your dessert? Um, I like the idea of the presentation, but it's a little bit clunky. I can see that here. It looks like you were cooking with a little bit of fear. It almost feels like you were second guessing your moves when you were presenting this plate. But you know what? If it tastes good, the rest can be improved on. The flavors may really honor Mary Berg's dessert. I like that you made cornmeal cake. I love how the corn just subtly pops in. I saw lemongrass on your station. Were you able to get that into your dish? My intent was to make a buttermilk lemongrass lemon peel gel. It would have brightened everything up. I see where you were going. You've taken a dish and you've added your own style to it. I think you got a bit lost though. May. When you look at it, you don't see dessert. You see a whole meal. But it could be very tasty. The flavors go together, and the textures as well. The very soft corn cake, the blueberry mousse, got a bit of fresh blueberries in there to give it a bit of acidity. Very pleasant. But is it legendary? No. the judges can get past the clunkiness. This is my first blender, and hopefully it doesn't send me home. Desserts are often the great equalizer in this kitchen, the thing that brings the mighty to their knees. And tonight, that was the case once again. We all agreed that one cook had a particularly tough time. We have no choice but to say goodbye to... The rest of you may go back to your station. Oh my God, May. I told you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. May, when you returned to this kitchen for a second time, you came back as a completely different cook. We all marveled at the skill, poise, 
and pure grit that you develop working in professional kitchens. Title or no title, you are going to continue your upward journey. We're just sorry that this stage of it ends tonight. Me too. I really appreciate the opportunity to come back and erase some of the bad cooks I had for my previous season, and I'm just really glad that I had a chance to show my growth. Now please leave your apron at your station. Thank you. This competition for me meant a second chance. Season four version of me, she didn't have any confidence. I think that was from the butter, a little bit of aluminum. Wow, pains me to see that. But now I have a voice. I found my perspective. I found what I want to do with food. May you keep surprising us with your level of skill. You know how to cook shrimp. It just sings. <laughs> Look how thin that is. Very, very beautiful. <laughs> well composed. Nice cook on the salmon. You did well. Thank you, Chef Elvin. Yeah! So proud of us! All the experiences that I had and all the great cooks and chefs that I've come in contact with, I take from that the biggest lesson that I learned. First and foremost, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. As long as you are happy with yourself and you believe in yourself, that's the most important part.